It shows, a, yeah, another betrayal, uh, perhaps the ultimate betrayal. This company built a personal relationship with Sarah Payne and they gave us support in a campaign for Sarah's Law. Um, but let me just say, I find it amazing that this story only broke 90 minutes ago and already there was a statement from Rebecca Brooks from a high, very expensive PR firm in London, Bell, Pottinger, Business and Brand. You've, the BBC are already quoting sources close to the company with very technical detail about what was on the phone and how it, w how it was operated. It strikes me that somebody must have known that this story was coming and I think the bigger question we have to ask tonight is when did News International know about this? When did Rebecca Brooks know about this? She's not given an outright denial in her statement. Um, and it's almost as if they're enacting a crisis PR plan in front of our very eyes. And that, for me, raises more questions uh, tonight than the actual shocking story itself. And um, I mean, obviously, you bring in a lot there. You say that she's not issued a denial. She has said she was absolutely shocked and she would never have sanctioned um, the hacking of Sarah Payne's phone, who, who by all accounts was a, was a friend of Rebecca Brooks. Well, I'm reading the statement from Bell Pottinger Business and Brand, and I can't mm. see the line in it, I categorically deny that this phone was not hacked. Um, so I'd like to hear that, if, it, if, if, it, if, they, if they think that. But how would they know that the voicemail wasn't activated until eight, 18 months ago on this phone? Did they check in advance on this? Did they have a suspicion? that Sarah Payne might have been targeted, and if they did, why didn't they come clean about it earlier? It just strikes me that there's something very fishy about the way the media handling of this story is already taking place within two hours of the revelation in The Guardian. And let us not forget the ultimate betrayal is poor Sarah Payne relied on these people to execute her campaign, they introduced her to politicians, they published literature for her, and, and she, for the first time, has had confirmation that she was a target for one of News International's private investigators. I don't hear an apology from the company tonight. I don't see any contrition. I just see an attempt to try and muddy the waters on the issue of the, mm. uh, on the, issue of the story and some highly paid London PR firm trying to brief the BBC about very technical details. I'm afraid that Sarah Payne can't afford a very expensive London PR firm to defend herself tonight, and I don't think it's fair. Uh, just going back to the statement that you were sort of saying there was no apology in it, no uh, absolute denial. And w what she she says in the statement is the allegations were abhorrent and particularly upsetting because Sarah Payne was a dear friend. I mean, what what some people are saying is that it it kind of backs up her uh, the, her statement uh, of what she didn't know was going on because um, they're saying, well, there's no way she would have sanctioned this and, and therefore, I mean, they're saying if this was going on without her knowing, then it could be an indication that broader phone hacking was going on without her knowing, without her being consulted. I, d I don't know who's saying that. All I know tonight is there's been a revelation that Sarah Payne, who was given support and used by the News of the World to promote the Sarah's, the Sarah's Law campaign, has found out in the last 24 hours she was target, targeted by a private investigator for News International. My, my recollection, by the way, uh, from the original parliamentary inquiry is that Glenn Mulcair was offered an exclusive contract with News of the World in 2001, paid £10,000 a month. So if the BBC have been told they were, he worked for other newspapers, it strikes me that there is a PR campaign to try and muddy the waters on that as well. And it's not fair. And, and just, it's not going to work. Right, we're, we're going to get to the facts of this, regardless we're, we're, of what PR firms are saying. We're almost out of time, but I just want your thoughts on that, what more damage this can do, because obviously the paper has gone, Rebecca Brooks has gone. Where does this leave the whole hacking scandal tonight? Mark's a new low for News International. I didn't think it could get any worse than it did with Millie Dowler. But poor Sarah Payne tonight. She must be wondering who her friends are. It must be absolutely appalling to have heard this, and my heart goes out to her.